Uh, eyes up here, please. Make sure you're covering your nose. We talked about, do you, are you going to be a ruler? Or are you going to be a leader? And, thanks. Awesome. Glad. Okay. And you're going to create your own leadership chart. Uh, I gave you my version, which we go over more today. You're going to create your own version. And we talked about how you define leadership, what the attributes are for a good leader. And now you need to figure out what are the main action words that I utilize these attributes to make other people better. And we came to a class consensus that leadership is action you take on purpose to make other people better people. Actions you take on purpose to make other people better people. And then we listed all these attributes that are needed for me to make other people better people. The way I designed my thing back when I was 20, I kind of wanted it based off a video game. I just, back when I was a kid, played the NES, there's no Nintendo, there's levels to each game. And every level got harder than before. And at every level, you usually got some kind of power that you could use to help you defeat the next level. And so we talked about the, the, the first three levels yesterday is character, excellence, and, and, and vision, which we'll talk about here in a second. And every time you advance up a level, notice you get less and less power on this thing. When I was a kid in NES, there was a line that went across the screen that showed how much power you have. And the reason why you have less power every time you go up is because you're giving so much yourself away to others to make these things happen. If you want to invest in, in environment, relationships, and choices, and growth, and love, and service, and elevation to produce your leadership, you're giving away so much of yourself to others every single day. So you're losing power because you're giving it away. You're giving away your attributes. You know, it was an old poem. You know, bell isn't a bell until you ring it, and the love that was put inside you wasn't put there to stay. Love isn't love until you give it away. Leadership is about you give the, give the best of yourself away to others and make them better people. And, and the higher you go, the, the less people can do this too, because most people are, are selfish. This is a life of service. I'm serving you. How can I give it away? And we talked about how the two most important things you got to start with is your character and your excellence. Okay. If you're just a good dude, you have very minimal influence. But if you're a good human being and you're good at what you do, you have excellence, you have a skill set that you can apply to anything. You might not be excellent at everything, but you know the secret to excellence to prepare to be good at anything. People want to listen to you now. But you're still minimal influence. You're just a good, a good dude and good at what you do. The next thing that takes you to the strategy is do you, can you, do you have double vision? Can you cast a vision for the whole organization saying, this is where we are, but this is what we can become, and then individually give each person their own vision for their life? And this is where you become someone that changes people forever. If I could say, yo, Micah, I love you the way you are, and I love you so much, I want to give you a new vision for what you can become. I love you as you are now, but I know you can become more, and here's how. As we mentioned yesterday, when we're really little, we're visionary. We think we can become an astronaut. We think we can literally be Superman. Just put on a little sheet, a cape, we're good to go. But as we age, we lose our vision, we lose our light. And for most of us, there's always exceptions, for most of us, we need an outside force, an outside voice saying, hey, I see you, and I see more in you, and it helps us see it now too. But most of us need someone else's voice to say, hey, you are so much greater than you're behaving right now. Vision matters. I mentioned my little niece, who last year was telling me she wants to read science books to cure COVID. Yesterday, she's saying, I'm not a science person anymore, but she got a 70% on her science test. She's 10 years old. Like, what are we talking about? You're 10, Lily. You're a science person. It's one test. Memorizing terms. It doesn't have anything to do with science. But slowly, we start giving our light. All that you are and all that you're not is all a direct result of the leadership in your life. You leading you and the leadership of those around you telling you what you can be. Because your outer success comes from your inner story. Your words create your world. So we gotta help other people tell a better story. But we gotta be good people. We gotta know how to do things with excellence. And we gotta know, hey, hey here's how I can communicate a vision to you. And when you do that, you're gonna need all these other things next. Once I cast your vision, then as a leader, I gotta create an environment that makes the vision possible for you. I gotta work on my relationships, 
my choices, my growth, my love, my service, and elevation. Elevation means when I take you from where you are to making the vision real. That's leadership. And when you do that for people, they're going to love you forever. Through, through love, you can live forever, even after you die. The breath of your life can last after your last breath. When you help someone see that they can be more than they thought they could, they don't forget that. And when you elevate one, you elevate everyone they elevate. It just compounds. And through that impact, you gain immortality. That's what I want to show you how to do today and these next few days, and you're going to build your own company. Leadership is the most important topic in life because leadership affects every topic in life. So we've got to study it more. All these attributes, these, we call it business soft skills, are the most important skills. And we don't emphasize it enough, teach it enough, or reflect on it enough in school. Character matters. So I'm explaining to you today character, I'm explaining to you today excellence, I'm explaining to you today vision. What's this right here? A hammer. A hammer. What do you do with a hammer? You nail nails. You nail nails? Hammer, hammer and nails. Hammer time. Hey, hammer time. There you go. Uh -huh. da, da, da. You know, I don't know how to do it anymore, but hammer time. Hammer pants. I heard a story one time about a local kid here who lived with his, his grandparents. His mom and dad, for some reason, they weren't involved in his life. As he was growing to high school, he started getting kind of an attitude. He lost that sweetness, that softness, the essence of a little child. And was developing bad character. Shame. Love you. Thank you. And he did something really bad in school. I forget what it was. Made fun of some kid. Did some really, really low character. I don't remember what. School calls him home with his grandparents. Kid comes home from school. Tries to avoid his grandparents. Tries to sneak in the house and walk in. His grandparents says, son, come here. He's like, what? He goes, the school calls. Something happened today? It's not my fault, blah, 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 blah. Again. Being a leader means I'm responsible. Kids are taking responsibility. I'm responsible. Response, able, and I'm responsible. That's what it means to be a leader. And the grandma says, I'm not having that. No, no, no grandson of mine is going to be of low character. He says, son, take this hammer, take this box of nails, go out to the shed, and hammer in all 500 nails, and don't come back until you're done. He's like, what? That's crazy. Right now. Go outside. You got a big mouth. Go outside. And hammer and every nail, don't come back until you're done. He's like, fine, whatever. He's going outside. He's outside. He's hammering. He's hammering. You know, all this rage out, stupid crap, blah, 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 blah. Comes back in, you know, throws the hammer down. I'm done. And Grandma says, son, come here. He's like, oh, what? Pick up that hammer. You don't throw a hammer in my house. Yes, Grandma. What do you think you're doing? Going inside. No, 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 no. You're not coming back into my house. If you go to my shed and remove all 500 of those nails. Just, what? Grandpa's told me, no, no, son, I don't want to hear your lip. Get out of my house until you remove every one of those nails. He's like, oh my gosh, she's out here. And now he's realizing it takes a lot more effort, a lot more effort to remove the nails than it does to hammer them in. And he's sweating, he's angry. And finally, after the fifth one, one he's kind of calmed down. Comes back in the house, gently sets it down. Says, Grandma, I'm done. Grandpa says, Son, come here. He's like, Oh my goodness. He goes, Come with me outside. And they walk outside, look at the shed. He goes, What do you see? The kid's like, A bunch of holes? That's right. Integrity, integer, whole number. That character means your whole person. That you don't act one way when we're not looking and another way when we are. When you have low character, when you harm people, when you manipulate or you're unethical or you're unkind, you don't show grace or forgiveness, you're hammering in a nail to someone. You're putting a hole in their spirit. And no matter how apologetic you are, and you support whatever you mess with the fence and own it, even when you remove the nail, the hole still remains. But son, the hole's not in the person you harm. The hole's in you. We're all gonna make mistakes in life. Make sure only a few are from mistakes of character. Because the more holes you have in your armor, the easier you collapse and you lose your strength. So mess up a lot, son. Make tons of mistakes. Make new mistakes every day. But not mistakes of character. Mistakes from trying new skills. 
not from trying to get past someone. Because the teeter-totter leader looks at relationships as cornerstones, not stepping stones. People aren't things I use to get ahead. The people I invest in to elevate up above me. That's the difference. How strong is your character? And it takes no power almost. It's like it's full power. Just being a good dude, being a good human being, not hard to do. Next step, a little harder. Excellence. We read about Alan Brewster the other day in the book Top Secret. If you want to be excellent at anything, you're going to encounter a lot of critics. The bright lights at night attract what? Mosquitoes suck from you. Don't dim your light for dimwits. Excellence means you have to stand up on your desk alone for a while. And like the barrel monkeys, raise people up with your excellence. There's a little boy once in fourth grade. The teacher gave him a, 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 a assignment. Said, Everyone draw a flower. Imagine, that, that was the final of this class. Everyone draw a flower. Everyone's drawing this one boy, really into it. He's having a great old time. Draws, draws, draws. The teacher gets over here. Great job, Sheila. Great job, Nancy. Comes here. What is this? He's all happy. Oh, hey, Mrs. It's, it's my flower. And she goes, no, 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 it has a face. Walt, flowers don't have faces. And he looks up to her and goes, well, mine do. That takes gumption right there. That takes courage. And she says, well, you redo this flower or we're giving you an F. Flowers can't have faces. And there's a legend, there's a rumor. I don't know if it's true. I haven't been able to fact check this. A beautiful story either way. That on opening day of Disneyland, many, many years later, much older Walt Disney, before anyone came to his park in the Magic Kingdom, the happiest place on earth, reached into his pocket where no one could see and took out a crumpled piece of paper with a flower and a face on it. And a big red F at the bottom. And he said, you can keep your F because I kept my vision. I kept my dream. And in my world, flowers have faces and a mouse can talk. And the rest is history. Raise your hand if you ever met Walt Disney. Who here has met him? Oh, no one. Raise your hand if you've ever been to Disneyland, watched a Disney movie, bought a Disney product, experienced Disney in any way. All of you. I have an autographed Mickey stick. Excellent. <laughs> you've all experienced his vision. And you were all born after the man died. That's the power of vision. It matters. And if you want to get there, you got to be a good human being, and you got to be excellent at what you do. Walt wasn't just good, he was excellent. And thus his vision took place. So how do you become excellent? I learned that at a young age when my grandfather was washing his car. When I was five years old, my grandpa started putting me to work. My grandpa, Hill took care of me every day of my life. In the morning, him and my grandma were there. And after school, they were there until my parents got home from work. Every day from preschool to fifth grade when he passed away, I saw my grandpa every day. He put me to work. I polished his shoes. I, I, I weeded grass. I planted flowers. The one job I disliked the most was every week I had to wash and wax his car. Call his Cadillac, even though it wasn't Cadillac, that was Chrysler. You couldn't afford a Cadillac. But you want to pretend it was Cadillac. Now that age, that was the status symbol was Cadillac. And here I am, six years old, out there in the hot sun once a week. And I get on my hands and knees and scrub all the little spokes and, and, and the tires and you know aerosol and do all these things on, on, the, on the fake leather inside. And for the first few weeks, I would finish and say, Grandpa, I'm done. He would come outside and inspect. And every time that, oh hey, little Stevie. This is wrong. Oh, you missed a spot here. And I couldn't just change the spot. I had to redo the whole process over again. So the first few months outside, I was washing and waxing my grandpa's car twice a week. And I was like, what is this guy doing to me? Why is he picking on me? What's going on? My neighbor was coming, oh man, your, your grandpa's making your little feet work so hard. One day I walked in, he's drinking his Diet Coke, watching TV. Grandpa, I'm done. He said, yeah? I go, yeah, he goes, good. And he handed me $5. And every job I did, he paid me money for. It was always $5 for every job, $5. 
Now, I wasn't dumb enough to say, are you going to come inspect? And I hit, I was thinking, I was like, okay, thanks, Jeff, and I walked out there. And the rest of my life, as Jeff, I'm done, he never came and expected again. Because he knew he had trained me in excellence. He knew. He wasn't picking on me. He was picking me up. He was elevating me. Like I found become a Jedi. I knew how the power is the force. I, excellence means when you say a job is done, it never has to be redone. No step is skipped. No corner is cut. No spot is missed. Excellence is in the details. Think how many jobs have to be redone now or done the shoddy work with no pride. Back in the day, taking pride in who you are, everything was got with the handshake deal. It was a World War II generation era. Your word was everything. A man that's your word is not a man. Be a good person. Be excellent. And then cast a vision for your life that's different than how the world sees it right now. As Bradbury said, eat the world and vomit lava. Create something new with your lives. And then help someone else do the exact same thing. That's impact. That's influence. That's leadership. Every one of you are leaders because every one of you influences. Human beings, we're communal. The question you need to ask is, am I have maximum influence, minimal influence? Am I going to be an elevator or am I going to be a deflator? Am I going to be the teeter-tot leader who lowers my ego to the ground, elevates others up above, and says, hey, I want my flowers to have faces. I'm not going to put holes in people. I'm not going to try to rule them. I'm going to try to lead them. I'm going to get on the ground and make sure every spot is taken care of so the job is done and never has to be redone because I know what it means to be excellent. Well, I do those three things. I can help other people do those three things too. They can change their lives. And once I can give you a vision, I got to create an environment. I got to create relationships, choices, growth, love, service, and elevation to give you the proper leadership. Which we'll go over these things in the next couple days with you guys. But I want you now, I want you to write about one of those three levels of the game. And what way in your life so far has either character, excellence, or vision played a role in your life right now? Either on you directly or how you help someone else. Try to hit the two paragraph minimum, but we should have pushed past the minimum. Don't race this right writing workout, bench board in the bar. In what way, choose one of the three levels of leadership. Has either character, excellence, or vision played a role in your life so far? And we'll share these in a little bit. Sound good? All right, start writing. Get to it.